people. All right, let's go. All right, dude. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just finished watching uh, Don't Mess With The Zoe Animal. I was doing some stuff in the background in the kitchen there. And I just kept, kept thinking about that, that, how close I am to always saying that. Okay, so let's go already. Right? And couldn't remember where that was from. It was from... Uh, don't mess with the zone. And hey guys, Crusty Old Crow here to get in a daily uh, TCCC. I told you I'm going to try and do daily content. I didn't say I was going to be committed to getting it out early in the day. But, you know, it was a good problem to have to be busy today. Uh, I got a few things done on uh, a few of the hobbies and a few of the, uh, the Joe stuff that I've been talking about. And I've got a few things ready to kick off finally. And I'm very close to having a batch of figures done to present in a group, which will be new for us. Uh, you've seen me present a two-pack, but I haven't gone beyond that, and I'm very close to doing well beyond a two-pack. Uh, I can do a two-pack right now, but I want to introduce them as a collective as well as some other characters I've been stashing away in the background. Um, you will see me working more on the Wolverines, but you've also uh, may have picked up on me... Um, doing these guys lately uh these are those other background characters because that's what the wolverines were to be well uh background characters for the winter set and whatnot uh these are those gi joe snake eyes cheap dollar store knockoffs that somebody's trying to pawn off for a lot more they're trying to charge classify figure lot prices on facebook garage sale still not gonna call them out but if you're watching and you're here in ottawa don't buy it into that the five dollar snake eyes figures have just enough articulation to pass as background characters and today i was pleasantly surprised when i found that uh well here's here's one particular helmet that fits them oh potentials so i have a small list of potentials that these things can fill roles for you guys knew about ninjas but there's others there's other roles these things can fill in the background steel core is a glorious discovery as i see it but you also know I was busy today doing a beachhead rip. You thank you so much, Aaron, the toy enhancer for that. So it was nice to get a tactical perspective down range. And yeah, uh, like I said, it wasn't the only figure that Aaron had thrown in there. He threw in three dukes and a couple of rams as well, which has created new puzzles and obsessed my mind to the point of creating another unit that I'm going to work on in the background. So you'll see some... You know, like a complete reprioritization of the next batch of characters that me and Loki talked about. Yeah, the 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 couple that I, I talked about that he's sending, I'm closing the loop on those. But as far as the next list, things have kind of tweaked. Uh, but I'm good to go on a lot of stuff. But there's so much more I just thought of recently with Loki that he's going to love that I order from him. Because he's going to be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got you, bitch. <laughs> oh, he's probably said that a while ago. Uh, so listen, what am I going to show you guys today? What am I working on today? T Triple C. Well, guys, I want to keep it a quick one because I didn't look both ways before I crossed the street today, meaning I didn't check if any lives were kicking off soon, either Punk, Chad, Aaron, uh, any of the guys I watch. Uh, or I'm, or I've been trying to make sure that I catch the episodes of because I, I forget certain nights who's doing what right and lately I become more aware of it when me Aaron and uh, three star draw get together and we used to have to talk about wait a minute guys okay who else is going live that night do we want our audience to have to make a choice or do we want them to flow into it so not going to make a long video but this one I think is going to be packed full of little things that I've been trying to show in other videos but uh haven't been able to properly speak to I get I get caught up in a thought and I lose track and then I look at the clock and there were things left to be discussed right but uh I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that I am doing right now a little update on things and uh I have to glue two things while I do it. And then uh, I'm going to show that wall again. I'm going to show the stuff that I'm working on and talk you through a couple of little concepts. But moreover, I'm going to show you my dry brushing technique. Again, I'm going to show you the supplies I'm using, the paints I'm using, the primer I'm using, the tools I'm using, and some advisement I, I do with this. And I am going to update a 350 subscriber contest that we are very close to seeing uh the the grand moment of where aaron the toy enhancer helps me out by picking the winner uh so first things first uh one of the things you'll 
I'll say is the difference be between what you need between doing figure conversions and doing training is vast, but uh, you can never go wrong, guys, with a nice, good, hot glue gun. Loki Wartooth just chimed in, and he was saying that applies to figure conversions too, you nut. Because uh, this is his approach, using Vaseline on the end of the ball. Uh, you know, he'll he'll uh, use hot glue to fill in any gaps on 3D printed heads so that they fit. It's one of his uh, uh, fitting techniques for seeing that all heads can fit on all figures, right? It's just one of the many approaches. He uh, he mentioned that because he knows I, I use sticky tack, right? Uh, and I was aware that about the hot glue gun, glue gun one. He, I think he told me when we first met, right? But I use this. Uh, I use sticky tack on my ball joints between the head and the neck, uh, strictly because, guys, uh, I pivot a lot. And sometimes, and you'll see this with one character, uh, I'll blow an entire concept out of the water because I find the figure works for a much better character concept when I see a different head on it. Right, so uh, I like the ability to have the head stay on for most shelf reasons and even jostling or possibly tipping over, it stays on with sticky tack. But yeah, Loki's would make it even more secure and functional still because it rotates and does everything the head should do. So that, I guess the general point on that one, guys, is pay attention to the advice uh, you're given on any YouTube and weigh it for yourself. A lot of what you'll see me present to you today is what works for me at the level I'm at. I am not a master class. I am not, uh, you know, mythic legions, anybody, anything, customizer. I am, there are like King Beast Man, man, holy crap. I, I'm nowhere near these guys' caliber. But you, uh, I want you to ask yourself one good question. Go watch two or three of my videos. You can pick the shorter ones if you want, but just go pick two or three of my videos. Doesn't even have to be ones where I'm customizing a figure. It could just be talking about anything. Joe Hot Mike, figure review, you know, any of that stuff. And ask yourself if I am not having more than my money's worth of a good time when I'm doing these sorts of things. And I know you guys feel the same way because you keep coming back. You regular subscribers, you, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, but some of you, I know, are at different skill levels beyond mine. And some are... You know, the, uh, maybe just starting out and some are on the fence of uh, what they want to try it. So that's kind of what this video is for is one. I want to show you, I, uh, I'm a simple guy. I like simple things. I like it when I keep my own life simple sometimes. So when I can find a good hack or a good thing, I'm a lot like what Punk with Toys was saying the other day. I'm very against gatekeeping, right? Um, you know, if you discover something worth knowing, it, it's more than likely worth sharing. Uh, you probably have some like-minded people, especially if you're a content creator or uh, a professional in any way, I guess, for sure. People want to know that stuff, right? And for you to withhold that information because you want it to be your... Because remember in the 80s, ancient Chinese secret. That was the old, uh, I think, Tide or, or one of the, the laundry soap commercials, Cascade, possibly. Ancient Chinese secret. But you want it to be your special little secret like mama's recipe um i don't know man i guess that's I, I i guess i can understand it and it's definitely your prerogative if you discovered it but i think the dangers of being the gatekeeper is that when somebody else eventually does discover what you've discovered how to do they might very well reveal how simple it is and then you might look a little bit like egg on your face in some ways um especially if you assume a personality about it and, and by personalities i mean like a level of speaking down to people like oh, i figured this problem out and you peons won't tossle you know you're lucky i'm giving you the time of day kind of mentality i'm sure we can all relate somebody at some point somewhere in some line um who, who's been like that, right? And I'm not saying names right now. I actually can't think of ones right now. The guys that are, I'm sure are coming to people's side, I'm going, okay, well, maybe they're not that bad, right? They're not what I'm really talking about. But, I mean, we've seen the guys like Donald Trump, you know, uh, ego go to a head, head get out of control, mouth get running, right? Uh, yeah, so I've got this upside down. So those little function features and anything I'm really showing right now, I just had to get it out of the way. To see if it'll work. It might work. I'll, uh, you'll see that at the end of uh, when I present the actual wall. 
So let's start from flash to bang. What are the f three real criteria I use when I uh, when I'm judging a figure that I want to like? You're in the toy store, you're looking around, you see a figure, and you want to reach for it, guys. We've all been there. You were like, I didn't come here for that one, but it, there it is, and I wasn't prepared to see it. But my first reaction is to reach for it, right? Uh, sorry, I was more prepared. For this I had my list written down, but it's fine. I can speak to it. Uh, right away, because of my ADHD, I'm precluded to overspend. It's, it's, it's just one of those things, guys. That's why you see me talk about the financial side of this so much, about buying used figures or, you know, the Hasbro release wave, my plan to buy one, two, or three, depending on what, and when I talk, what you're going to see on the channel. That's me committing myself to a budgetary plan because it's very easy to go over budget, and I think a few of you probably more than relate to that uh welcome to the channel motherfuckers <laughs> right uh but it is what it is right so what i'm showing you are my preferences and sometimes it's based on price but when it comes to that figure in that moment where you're reaching right one is it one you need okay well if it's one you need in your classified collector i'm using classified as the key example here yeah okay that's a separate conversation but if you're reaching it's one you didn't need i'm talking about that voice uh what is it that gets it onto my shelf well it's got to meet the three friggin criteria and the first one was does the vision uh does the vision match a uh a need anywhere i've identified in my collection before meaning what i'm looking at this figure for and maybe it's not even a classified figure but it's for a custom right is what's drawing me to that figure is that matching a need i identified before i ever saw it like uh hey i sure could use more blue troopers get to a store see uh, a line of xyz series and the guy's blue kind of looks like a uniform you're like okay well that yes okay that matches the criteria but i picked up an insane clown posse gang member and i'm like no okay it won't right there all right right away to pass that first criteria conversely it's like okay is this uh augment something very powerfully by getting it meaning okay well maybe i didn't have that criteria but now i can see a very strong criteria, a very obvious and undeniable criteria based off my collection and what I do that makes this figure. Okay, those are those are things that I streamline think, right? So um, yeah, a lot of critical thinking has to go because otherwise you're picking up a, a basket or getting a shopping cart and you're loading up on th like three, four things when you went there for one, if not zero, right? Uh, so I do that. And then I have to weigh it on the price. Okay, is the price really that good? Am I leaping at something that I'm, I'm going to regret later because I'm going to see this available for quite a while or uh, I am going to have a regret about this at some point that I'm aware of right away. If I'm getting that right away uh, and it's related to that price, you gotta, you gotta back away. Because it's not like you don't have other choices and, you know, you, you went there with an objective. So why does that change? I don't always succeed in meeting those criteria, but those are the ones I'm trying to reach. The last criteria it's got to meet is does the price and any other criteria or feature in this thing, because one or two good features in that figure often meets all the criteria, uh, does that price uh, do any damage to a plan I've already committed to? Does it change something? Uh, is it an undeniable saving? Or is it really the norm and I'm not educated? I gotta go find something out, right? All those criteria. So it's critical thinking. It's a bit of a, a priority analysis to see if that impulse to have that figure actually works into your even work schedule. Did you not have bigger plans if you were a conversion artist? Did you not have other things you were going to get in the wave and be prepared for or pre-order? or save up for from a HasLab before you went and did this and saw that thing on sale. You know, I think we all have that conversation. So where I try to streamline my money as best as I can is supplies, right? But sometimes it doesn't pay to do so. One I found is this primer paint. This is not an expensive primer paint. It is the primer paint that we, uh, we've been talking about on my channel for a bit because it was uh recommended i think Myth mythic customs uses it uh or a variant thereof but this is cryolon fusion all in one two in one 
this is an all-in-one. I think he recommended two-in-one, but I think the difference is negligible from the results I get with this. Uh, but good primer, darkened spray, and I use flat black. I think he said he uses flat black as well, if not just matte or regular black. Uh, this is how you get something this dark to work with to get started uh, with anything, right? When you, so for example, um, any figure I'm going to work on, if I say, huh, not that I'm going to do this, but uh, yeah, no, I got a better example. These custom, these custom uh, Cobras that I've been working on, right? These guys like you saw getting slaughtered by Beachhead earlier. Uh, if it's the Green Trooper, and I think this one is, it is. Uh, that's what I used on this to make it a lot easier, right? So then, um, and yeah, you can see I did have, Oh, I hit it with a paintbrush. That's why I was like, what? Are we, that's not a chip. That's a swirl. Uh, easy fix. I'm like Bob Ross when I do this, guys. Happy little accidents. But so when uh, when you use this primer, if you have decals, um, don't follow my example, like with my little dirt bike here, because I didn't give a shit about the decals. I have Gooby gone. It gets rid of the decals well. And sometimes I do this just to see if... Uh, priming it and then leaving the paint on top, like the the un, the original color even worked, and then I'll just give it that second prime coat, anyways. Or it's on a spot where I planned on putting kit anyway, so I wasn't overly worried about it. It's just the lazy man get the primer used. I go through a primer can a week at this rate, if not uh, two weeks, right? Just uh, getting parts ready, getting figures ready, getting background ground drops uh, ready, things like this. Uh, this bike will come into something I'm talking about a little bit later, but I use that as an example of the primer. Okay, so uh, where you see me here, uh, last video I talked about this Dremel tool. So if uh, if you have an interest in Dremeling for Idiots, you can watch the King of Idiots uses Dremel to bore out his new rock and roll version to uh, end state head uh, in that video. You don't need both these things, but uh, yeah, you can have a power drill and that's going to help you for some things with terrain. But I mean, if you're using a power drill for your figures, um, you're probably not watching YouTube videos, I don't think. Uh, but one thing I did find at the power drill was good for different size, uh, just for, pardon me, Loki, but getting a quicker Dremel out of the, the head joints. Sometimes I don't have the patience to be slow and meticulous like I show in my video and I have and to some good good fortune yeah I've used these to sand them down as well the point is to do it so carefully right not sloppily the next items are you need one of these two things if you're doing figure conversions all right you can't just have these things these things will cost you a lot of money and toys okay you need one of these two things all right I have both uh and I bought mine at uh I like used good thrift stores, right? For like three or four bucks because your wife gets mad when you sneak away with her hair dryer and, and the whole family suffers if they can't have their tea or whatever the fuck they use their kettle for. So I bought my own. Uh, so yeah, I find hot, soaky, bubbly, steamy, steamy boil water, 30 seconds to a minute to two minutes with a new figure, that's uh, that's the process for ripping a figure apart from bone to soul. Uh, but with just loosening up new figures and, and, and stiff joints, I'll use that hair dryer. It's faster, it's more efficient, less muff, less fuss, right? Uh, so those are two tools I use uh, greatly, and I like having both. But really, one or the other is good. If you hold a hair dryer to something long enough, you will do that. And of course... The, the weapon straightening factor. You you get packed weapons and equipment that get warped in shipping or in packing. This is, of course, another way to fix them with the boiling water or the uh, hair dryer. Right? Speaking of hair, oh my god. That's going to be going soon, boys. It's going. All right, let's talk a little bit of paints and washes, okay? Because uh, where I'm at right now, so let's just say clutches chopper i'm just calling it clutches chopper as a working title till i figure out something better here's a prime example of <laughs> neat okay the thing that's wrong with clutches chopper right now is i've got to glue some broken spokes that's why it found its way into the thrift store i'm sure and that's why i paid that low low price of three dollars and 99 cents for this great hog and it is a great hog i'm sorry but it just 
tough it is. It's a, it's a sick ass beast and uh, I'm in love with it. And it works. And I'm just calling that clutches because the two maintainers of my drove is a clutch and cover girl. And uh, yeah, well, both have really great vehicles and rock and roll also benefits from that. And you'll find out why some other time. Anyways, I am currently dry brushing where I add this black prime, right? And you can see uh, that why we use the black is so that we can apply a gray dry brush, bring all those details back out into light. And gray is a nice neutral area, actually far better than white, to start your next any color pretty much with, right? Be it a red, a blue, a green, a yellow, a white, a black. That's the area you want to start it on, not directly on the primer. So that dry brushing becomes really important. And I've been doing a lot of it. And actually, guys, one of the things I forgot about dry brushing, and if you don't really know what I mean by dry brushing, it's using a nice flat brush, putting the paint on it, wiping it down till it's just like a, a, a shit stain that won't go away. Pardon my language. <laughs> no, uh, it's like uh, just like a, a vapor off your brush almost, like just leaving the slightest traces. And like you're sweeping. Right? Um, you'll need some decent dry brushes as you get better with things and you realize what your techniques get you to do, what habits you have about stuff and things like that. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with starting with cheap dollar store brushes for dry brushes. For detail brushes and layer brushes and things like that, I wouldn't. But for dry brushes, you know, considering what you're using them for, especially with terrain and backdrops, yeah. You'll burn through them. Uh, they're not the best bristles, but they'll get the job done. Uh, I get my brushes from Michaels because they have great sales and I always have coupons and veterans get discounts and yada, yada, yada. Uh, but, you know, a lot of your local hobby stores will have some very high-end brushes, but you'll pay very high-end prices, and I don't necessarily think that's necessary. Especially if you're like me and just not taking yourself too seriously when you're doing this stuff, right? So, brushes. You need brushes, right? Uh, fine brushes, detailed brushes, wash brushes, right? So, uh, a nice thick, uh, wide, bristly one for lay, uh, this will apply heavy coats. Uh, a thin uh layer brush will apply just soft coats things like that that's your washes that gets caught in the recesses and dries it helps puff out that color and then of course you see i use a lot of vallejo the gray here in my hand is the one that i'm doing my dry brushing with notice how i peeled the stickers off this uh and the red is what i'm using on my his fire team uh this is a model color red right and it's actually just red um so yeah brushes and the paints i've talked about before you've seen me talk about this putty which is great for just adding just a little thing here and there or filling gaps where you didn't want gaps it's a compound putty a little bit of yellow a little bit of blue turns into a, a, a competitive color of green you mold it to what color you want and where you want it uh, and just like the clay it'll harden doesn't expand doesn't crack but it's not the smoothest substance uh, unless you know how to make it smooth, which is often, um, you know, a challenge some people forget about when they're using it, myself included. Uh, I wish I was better with my green stuff than I was, but, you know, in a pinch, it's, uh, it's a good little clay for small things. Okay. Uh, a ruler, pencil, all that other stuff. Measuring, you you can't go wrong. Measure twice, cut once kind of deal. Adderall, if you're like me and you have ADHD Adderall. Uh, these little corks are great uh, for, you know, sticking a clamp like, uh, like these ones uh, into. If you want to work on a piece like a head and you don't want to touch it with your fingers, these clamps are fantastic. These are fantastic. And these come with bottles that have joints in them. It's amazing. More medicine. All right. I salvage everything. I get through nothing, guys. Uh, to be conservative with my paints, especially if I'm mixing them, I don't tend to use an actual palette like these things uh, that people buy. And I, I, I have had them kicking around because usually they've been free. Uh, but no, little Dixie cups I find are the best. I cut them down and I use both sides before I throw one out. And I'll put two or three or four colors in there if I'm not mixing in. But uh, the last thing I'll show you about this bike, it was cool. I never, I thought these were just details. I didn't actually press them down. So, holy crap, I just looked over at Clutch and something moved in his pants. 
something moved in his pants when he heard that rev. All right, yeah, that's Clutch's hog. That's Clutch's chopper. Uh, okay, so uh, where did I leave off? Other tools you might want to need if you're taking things apart are pliers or I have a Gerber a Leatherman tool. The military gave us enough of these. I, I ended up with a with a couple. They've got the wire cutters and the and shitty little tools, but they've got some good tools on there as well, and they're good vices. You know, pulling figures apart, I, even out of boiling water. Again, don't rely on these. Rely on good grip and steady, constant pulls. No jerking actions with this figure in any way, shape, or form. Uh, scrap wood for terrain, for bases, for anything. Scrap card, plastic for windows, glass, things like that. You, you'll see. This was one that I've talked to about Aaron. Uh, with Aaron, the Toy Enhancer, and Loki Wartooth. These signs, maps, uh, pay, play money, everything like that. These are available to anyone and everyone. All you do is you go into a Google search and you type in 135th or 148th scale printable signs, printable maps, whatever you're looking for. Some will be bannered across because they're copywritten and you're, you're not supposed to print them. And some will be a little blurrier than others, but there's some really good ones on there that are usable. And that's what you've seen me use on a lot of my backdrops and you'll see me use them again. Uh, and I swear by them. Okay, glue, I use just cheap dollar store compound uh, uh, gel glue because I find at least then I know exactly where I applied it. If it's a liquid glue, I'm more likely to spill it down the model. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bits, 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 and bits, bits, bits. Keep everything that your classified figure has and feel free to remove things, but don't lose them because uh, you never know. That one holster that looked crappy on Duke might just look fantastic on Destro. You don't know, right? Uh, bases, I could go either way. Bases are nice to have. They are. They're, they're nice to have, but there's other solutions out there that aren't aren't what bases are for an investment and also hard on unlevel terrain. You know, uh, the bigger they are, they're more stable on level terrain, but on level terrain, you want to have better strategies than that. I suggest just getting to know the balance points of your figure and where your terrain is. But you've seen how that works on my show. One shot for figure falling and you guys get drunk all the time. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm convinced. Clams, vice, dog, dog clips, anything like that that can help you hold a piece uh, when it's gluing. And then the variety of cutting tools that I'll use. This is for big polystyrene, which, you know, that pink insulation foam. Small wood, good scissors for the stuff I cut. You see me spilling them out, but uh, Q-tips, toothpicks, toothpicks for glue application, Q-tips for decal application, along with a good pair of tweezers. Uh, that's how I put my decals on, and then a little layer of, uh, it's like a deco solvent that allows the decal to bond better. It's like a final wash you put over the decal. All right, so that's uh, a lot of the supplies I've been meaning to say. When I say wood supplies, guys, you don't need a lot of quality wood. If you go to your local dollar store, uh, the square doweling is pretty much gone. I think most how hardware stores realize a lot of journeymen or whatever uh you know guys in in the in the blue collar work industry with housing and woodworking and kitchen renovations and whatnot still need rectangular doweling of all sizes the dollar store used to carry them i used to buy them up at droves but they still have these circular ones right these help out with mixing and uh, you know uh behind the scenes helping stand up your diorama straight things like that just simple flat board, mason board is available for bundles of, you know, uh, four, 12, I think it's four or six, she, uh, 12 inch by 12 inch blocks with a lot of my stuff is made out of four bucks, not bad. And I keep all the scraps of that. And you've heard me talk about the hockey card sleeves, but even dollar store pre-made kits can be re-rolled, right? Wood, can't go wrong with a good wood supply, just like you can't go wrong with a good classified supply or hobby supplies. Other things you should have is if you're working with primers or an airbrush, airflow, a separate area to do it with airflow or a good filtration system and proper safety equipment and know the hazards of the materials you're using before you even use them. If you're going to go into epoxy resins and things like that, you better read up on what happens when it's in, you know, gets in your eyes, just on your skin, on your tongue, in your butthole, whatever, read up because you don't want to look like the idiot to your family just because you wanted to play with your toys in a better way, right? 
And I think all of us have done something idiotic for our toys. I know myself, I have. I know Aaron, you have. Loki, you have. Three star draw. I don't know. It doesn't really seem like you to do anything idiotic. You seem really cool. <laughs> all right, guys, quick flash over to the bikes and then I'm going to call it for the night because we're at 30 minutes. I got to go check for some lives. All right, so you remember the drifter. I found one G.I. Joe that works with this thing as far as scale and able to pose on it, but I have to verify it and uh, it's gung ho from the retro line. I think he works with that. Uh, so I'm gonna check into that. I'm gonna put that off to the side of secret things. Uh, this dirt bike, I've got a couple of these, believe it or not, I got these from the dollar store to just have as background bikes, uh, but they are perfect for Joe's scale and shit's simple. and. I don't have to do anything for them except paint them up and maybe add a couple of little bits and they might actually be good for background dirt bikes. What a great spine from the dollar store, $1.50. Uh, the, the Rams, I am going to paint up the Rams, but I might rescind what I was saying about not taking them apart. I might see if I can take them apart in a limited fashion and prime them after all, because I really want to do it right. But I am going with a, a color that might work if I can't do that. Uh, but yeah, I, I, the, I have plans for the Rams, even the sidecars with no Gatlings. Those are just more possibilities, baby. Hey, just a reminder, I'm wearing really shitty glasses and I forgot to look for my, uh, like, share, subscribe sign. So do that. Uh, I've shown it off Clutch's bike and, uh, hang on. Clutch. Clutch. Hey, Clutch. Okay. Uh, let's talk about these garbage pail kid stuff, hey? Eh? Aaron gave me these in the same box as all the other goodies I'm still giggling about. But hey, let's talk about Saturday morning with G.I. Crow. Let's say 11, 12. I'll set the timer. You'll see it. Put your notifications on if you're worried about it. Uh, let's open them on Saturday together. Maybe Aaron could join us. I don't know. But uh, we'll just put these right into the sleeves and we'll talk about them. And we'll go back to the 80s a little bit and talk about stuff. And like I said, maybe we'll play a little name that tune and I'll just, I'll, maybe I'll read you some stuff and ask you what it's from. <laughs> I don't know. We'll try to have more fun as the lives go on. I'm trying to get used to it and feel what an hour looks like. Done a couple, I know what an hour looks like, more or less now. All right, let's talk about the subscriber wall. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it, because, uh, you know, I, I, I put DMAC on there, and you can see I'm working in Skullfrog in there, and I've got a good one for... I've got a good one for quite a few of my regular subscribers who are in the comments a lot. And, uh, you know, Aaron and... and Three star, they're my uh, my fire team partners for for our trio of discussions. I can't wait to do that again one day. Uh, but I put little crows next to theirs because uh, I would. It's not about being subscribers. It's these are there's uh, there's some guys on here who really have my back. So this is my subscribers wall, right? And I um, just so you, to be clear, guys, uh, I know the end state seems like a Canadian making an anti-American sentiment. Not at all. Uh, Canada gets dragged down in the muck with it and everything. It's all equal playing field. That's why I had to put an emphasis of that. It's not just an American issue. It's a Canadian issue as well. Uh, so this graffiti wall is going to tell the story a little bit more of you guys and of end state a little bit more, but I'm going to keep that. All right, but here's the thing. That 350 contest. You know the one where I said, give me a description of your character in three lines and I'm going to make that character custom for you and I'll... And then later I said, uh, instead of doing the drawings thing, I will make custom art for your character, give you all the concept sketches, give you a write-up and all that. And also I'm going to give you a brand new character right off the shelf from here in Ottawa. I'm going to talk to you, see what you need and see what I can do for you that way. Grab you a character. Uh, maybe it's a double you have. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe it's one you actually need. That'd be great. I heard somebody out there needing cover girl. I was like, yes, cover girl we can do, I think, out here. Um, but, uh, and then Loki Wartooth has pushed in some parts and things like that. I've decided that this wouldn't be too hard to make a portable version of this, meaning maybe I just paint the panels and let you hot glue it all together. I give you a schematic. And I got that idea from Aaron, the toy enhancer. And Bobby Wolf, your prize, Aaron walked me through how he, he worked that process of shipping. And I was like, well, wait a minute. I was thinking about this today as I was doing these. Because why wouldn't I? 
make that part of a prize. You have a little background for your figure. Oh, and did I mention these stages are in there in that 350 grand prize pool? Hey, if you're new to the channel and you haven't figured out where that is, it's me holding a sign saying, great, three, uh, 350 contest. Come in here. When we get to 350, Aaron the Toy Enhancer and I are going to go through those entries. I'm going to do up some sketches. He's going to pick the winner. We're going to let you know who it is. And all that stuff is going to one winner. And then, you know, the next contest, I think, will be the 500. But, guys, uh, that's pretty much it for what I wanted to talk about tonight. Uh, as you can see behind me, I'm almost finished up with my HISS 788 uh, Assault Squad. And I've got a rock and roll variant I'm working on. I'm saying that because you guys have seen. That's one of the Duke bodies. I have another Duke body saved for another character, Loki Wartooth, and I are working on. And that could lead to bigger, better things. But, guys, lots of new characters coming uh, for conversions on the channel. But starting tomorrow, I have talked to the guy from... The one who has the ninjas that I was so interested in. Me and him spoke again. I explained who I am as far as a channel and what Thursdays are. And that I really was hoping to hook up. And he's made it available tomorrow. I'm going to go get those those blue ninjas that I, I've already done a review on. But I wanted a couple more for myself. And I know somebody else who needs them. And that red ninja. So I'll get a red ninja review out there. And I am going to go pick up at least one of my Hasbro pre-orders Got to stay within that budget. As much as I'd like to pick up all three of them at once, uh, I'm going to see what my budget's allowing me to do. But I think it's just going to be the one, guys. So it's coming down right now to me. Quick kick. I know the demand is high. If I pop, if I lost them, I don't know if I could get them back. But Airborne has a bigger connection to me in that 60th anniversary trooper. I think he can just wait till the next time, right? But uh, yeah, it's between Kick Kick and Airborne. I'll decide tomorrow and we'll do a review on one of those two guys, all right? Till then, remember that like, share, subscribe. Don't forget, anytime you guys see us out here, we're just out here for a good old time, but we appreciate every moment with you. Whether that's me by myself or me with our friends, uh, I really appreciate the level of chat. Keep thinking up of those names for me, Aaron, and Three Star Draw. You guys are doing a great job with some of those suggestions. See you soon.